So seeing the lights on last night in the dark, that was really nice. I wanted to go from there and start doing some of the interior lighting, but as I record this, it's Monday at 8 p.m. I don't have a lot of time left and I need to stay really focused on priorities. And the next one's the head. I've already removed the head. I'm not gonna show you any of the details. <laughs> After I did my little t um, head talk last time, I got uh, some people who were not too terribly happy, which fair enough, I understand. So we're just gonna stick to the, uh, the implementation details. So I needed to clear the head out, so I took it out. It's needed a wash anyway, so I gave her a thorough washing and it's up drying on the deck. It has been for most of the day. And now what I need to do is mount the plinth. The plinth, let me grab that. So the plinth is a piece of white oak that I made. It's not exactly high-end woodworking, but white oak is very rot resistant. It's coated in, I think, four coats of Osmo oil. It's certainly fit for purpose, at least for the trip home, which really is all I'm concerned about at this point. So now what I need to do is clear out some hoses and decide how I'm gonna vent it. The right way to vent it is to run this hose to a end piece that has a fan built into it that blows up into a vent. I am out of time for cutting a hole, you know, doing the, as Mads would call it, the drill fill drill to make sure that the, um, the core is completely sealed off and make the mount, gasket it, and put a vent on the top but I have a jerry rig in mind that I'm hoping is going to work. The lighting in here isn't the best, but hey, it's boat life. So plan A, which is the quickest, and I wish I had a better light here, oh well, is to use this. This, hopefully is the right thread, screws into the old pump out um, access point, whatever you call that, the part where you, you screw the thing off. And what this allows you to do is it just sticks a hose right onto the end of it and sucks it out. My goal is to take this, if it screws in, <clears throat> if it does screw in, if this screws in, my next goal would be, I'm gonna have to bodge this, but it's only carrying air pressure. I couldn't find a hose to go on the outside of this. So my goal is to basically duct tape this hose onto the end of it and then run this up into a loop like this so that rain can't get in and tie this off to a lifeline or to something and this will become the air vent. I may cut this down, I don't know. But before I can see if that's gonna work, I need to see if this is gonna fit. If this doesn't, plan B, which is scarier, is I take the existing um, metal connection, the through hole. I mean, it's still a little through hole when it's on the deck, off, bed this with butyl tape, and this would go through the hull. It's designed to go through the hull this way. It's actually for a below water through hull. I think, or maybe above the hull, but an outlet for a scupper or something. I don't know what this was originally designed for, but put this in so that this flange is sticking up into the deck. If I, if I do that, this, well, I might need to use some heat gun to get it to stretch, but there you go, you can see that fits in. So obviously this would be the ideal solution, and then this would clamp it down, but I'm really scared that if I take that off and water gets in, it's gonna to start to rot the core. If I did this, this would sit flush on the underside. Back here, just up there, is where the existing pump out hose goes. So I could take the vent and just glue it, screw it, tape it, whatever I have to do to create an airtight seal and let the vent go out here. So this is my fallback, if only because I really don't wanna pull apart that fitting. I'll show you what it is, let's go upstairs. My head is turning into scrambled eggs with how much there's still to do and how little time there is left to do it. Deck ornament, 2023, latest fashion. So this is the old pump out waste fitting. Oh fuck, this is absolutely, holy shit. This is seized. Uh, I might be taking this out simply from lack of choice. I'm gonna go get the hammer and see if I can, uh, or maybe I'll get, I'll get something, see if I can crack that open. I have no idea why this is seized up so badly. I didn't think I did anything special when I uh, last pumped out before I removed it. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Oh, that worked. Did we get lucky? Holy shit, we did. That's that. Now that I know that this is gonna fit, this is fantastic. That's, uh, that's gonna work. Can I get another light in there? This terrible lighting, even by my low standards. This hose used to provide fresh water for the old 
um, had, as you can see, I put some clamps back on this in case the water ever came through. I had something to help stem the tide. For the same reason, I don't want to just cut this. This goes to a seacock of unknown vintage. Oh, that's even worse. I don't really know what to do for lighting. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> this looks like I'm about to tell a, a horror story at a campfire. I want to take these clips off, pull this down below this, and then put the clamps back down. The airhead itself has a vent, that gray hose that I showed you earlier. So this here was the selector hose. Uh, I think, look at where. Ugh. Even after all this time, this still stinks. That is the macerator pump, so that can go. Anyways, this is the hose I care about. That's the one that goes up to that deck fitting that we just put that cap on. What I'm hoping to do is hook the fan to the end of the hose that comes with a... Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what comes with the airhead. Normally, this would be what butts up to the bottom when I was talking about this through hole. So you imagine that this was mounted onto the ceiling, the inside of the cabinet. This would sit over it, and there's a gasket that goes here that you can seal this, but there's no screw holes. So I'm not really sure how this is actually supposed to work because this has screw holes, but this flange doesn't. I don't know if it expects you to drill your own through holes or, or three holes. Maybe mine was defective and it just didn't come with the through holes. In any case, the fan goes in like this. I didn't check the direction of airflow. I'll, I'll pull it out and check that, but that comes on like this and the gray hose screws into here and this provides the forced ventilation to blow the air out of the vessel and dry the solids. I'm hoping I can somehow jerry-rig this to that hose. I might just make a little cardboard box and duct tape the hell out of it. It's not going to be pretty, but again, I'm just trying to get home at this point. If I can't figure out how to mount this to the existing hose, my plan B is to go back and try this and actually screw this underneath the deck. But now I'm putting screw holes into the underside of the deck, which shouldn't get moisture because the top isn't broken, but I don't like doing that. I really want to do a drill fill drill and I just don't have time for epoxy. So I'm going to do my best to make this work again, just for the three weeks to get home. There is no getting around. This is going to be a nasty job. Buy a boat, suck it up. I swear to God, duct tape. duct tape is the best tool on a boat. It says no expert ever. This is why I wanted to get the lighting done before I got to this part of the project. I feel like I'm doing a lot of apologizing at this point, but well, sorry for that. I would get the GoPro out to show you what's going on, but I don't know where I put it. Okay, I need to start getting some stuff out of the way. Let's go back into the uh, head. Oh, this is gonna be disgusting, but it has to go. Now it has been months, and even then it was never used for, well, second use deposits. So hopefully it's tolerably disgusting. Can I even get that off? Oh, do I want to take a heat gun to what is effectively a poop pipe? I don't have the pick. I could try cutting it. That might be the best thing to do is to try cutting it. Okay, if I sever this, I should be able to pull this straight out. I need to get the hacksaw. Ah, being hot and stressed and low on time and doing a job that's utterly disgusting. It's, uh, it's what boat life's all about, don't you know? The top wants to come out, but now the bottom doesn't. Oh, because it loops back. There's a reason I've been putting this job off for a very long time. Oh, okay. This hose goes through here, loops up, and hooks into the bottom of the macerator. I can't really show you this, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a feeling you probably don't care because it's pretty disgusting. I don't even know how I'm gonna turn this into a usable video. I don't think most people are gonna wanna see this. I was just thinking, you know, I might even put this in the video, but for anyone who's watching this because you're thinking of getting a boat, uh, I mean, this is part of it, so. If uh, worse comes to worse, then my suffering is your cautionary tale. That's still a win. Though I should have done this when it was really cold out. Keep the smell down. Instead I waited for one of the first really nice warm days because I'm smart like that. Now, does the macerator go to a through hole below the water line? It might, but it also, it's on a long hose. So I can bring the hose up and, and clamp it off. Let me show you briefly what I'm doing. So this hose here that comes off the bottom of this Y valve goes out 
but it immediately comes back in and that's the far end of it right there. This is a macerator that goes to this hose, which I'm assuming that's the output and it sends it the macerated waste overboard when you're more than three miles out or whatever the rule is. So I'm going to take this off, bring it up high so it's above the water line, tape it off and cap it off just so that if the through haul leaks, there's no leak into the boat. And then I'm going to take this macerator out, which I mean, that's not going to be hard. And uh, then I can liberate this hose. So at least now you have some concept for what I'm doing back here. The wiring is completely f***ed on that, of course. I'm going to get some tape and cut that and tape it off right away. It's too hot to wear gloves. I don't know if that's coming through on camera, but the ground is longer than the neg or the, the positive. So as I tape these up, the ground and the negative shouldn't touch. And even if they do, well, A, I think this switch controls it. And B, even if it dead shorts, it's going to pop the breaker. So that's safe enough for now. Which also begs the question, if I can't, I, was so, I thought I could go from this hose straight to here, but now I'm going to have to figure out where it goes and fish it. Oh, that's disgusting. I need my gloves back. Sweaty or not. Ugh. I have a whole lot of water now. I just had a whole lot of water come out and I don't know what from. Okay, it might have been water caught in this. That was scary. I did not expect to hear a flow of water when I did that. Yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure that's water. Uh, well, that's why I've got bleach cleaner. Okay. That hole that this has to go through is very tight, so. Oh, ah. This is this hose. Ugh. Okay, there's no two ways about this. This is gonna be disgusting and I just have to live with it. Okay, it actually does look like mostly water. Mostly water. You know what, I think I might cut this and try to pull it out that side. The first liberated piece. So the reason this is fighting me so much is the hole is in the bottom. Ugh. The hose is coming in like this and making a sharp turn and coming straight up. And this hose is old and rigid. So I have to pull up while I push in while it's bending. And it's just a, it's a miserable job. Okay, can I get this macerator out of here and get that much more removed? <laughs> Oh, well that was a lot easier. These battery wire cutters have proven to be far more utilitarian than I realized. There, another piece liberated. This one is the one I'm going to tape over and clamp down because I want to keep this above the water line because this goes to a through hole. So I'm gonna actually do that right now after I throw this outside. The hose comes in right here and curves up. So now I'm actually wondering if I can get the cutter in underneath it and sever it right below there. That is working, but I will not survive the process. Let's get nashy nashy. All of that to get that out. Let's see if that's out enough now that we can rip it out. Got it. That worked. Now I have to decide. This hose is really what I want to use. Yeah, you know what? I think if I shove this through, I can curve it round and grab it under here, loop it up, and tie it into this. And I can put the fan assembly right here. How's that? That's better. Okay. That is the worst of it. I know I still have to deal with that bottom one, and that's actually the big one that's stopping me from putting the plinth in, but that was so disgusting. I'm gonna hit some bleach spray in there, give it a few minutes to sit, and then rinse it all out. Okay, let that sit for a minute.
If I had the shower sump working, I could just be like spray everywhere, but I don't. I think I've read out why, but that doesn't have to be fixed for the trip home. For me, I'm gonna take a bit of a break for you. So last night, I ended up not turning the camera back on. I didn't do a lot more. I was really hot and tired and gross. The one thing I did get was I got this hose out of the way. The way I did it is from the nav station seat, it looped around and you could just barely get your whole hand on it. And trying to pull out that way was pushing down this way was proving extremely difficult. Thankfully, Matt was here. So he was pushing down on the bum, on the butt of the screwdriver to drive it down while I was pulling it out. And eventually it popped and I was able to pull it out. I'm gonna put the hose clamps back on this, even though it's taped, just to help, because it's technically below the water line, and if something happens to the seacock, I wanna minimize the chance of any leakage. I still need to also cap this one. So those are what's gonna be next, and then we're gonna work on the mount. Now, am I fooling myself that this is gonna hold back the water? No. The goal here is that if the seacock lets go, it slows the water. It gives me a better chance well, it gives the bilge a better chance of staying ahead of it until I can deal with whatever might have caused the leak. I have no reason to think this is going to leak, but that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so that is the macerator feed dealt with, and it is now up there for the trip home. That's too big. I may just have to zip tie this up here to keep it above the water line. Yeah, so you can see the previous owner marked where the water line is. And you can see how high this is. So I'm just going to zip tie to this to this. And that'll keep me safe for the trip home. There. So that's dealt with. So now the next task is to weave this down through here. So there's the two ends. I don't know exactly how much slack I need here. The trick now is it's coming out from... Where is it? It's coming out from under there and it needs to go through. Can you see that hole over there? I don't think you can see that hole it's behind the orange wire. You know what? I'm not going to worry about this. I wanted this in before I mounted the plinth just so I had this area to work with if I needed to. I know it's back there so let's mount this. So one of the things I did with this plinth is I put a slight round over on the front just so you don't nail your shins and the back's fairly sharp edge. So it's gonna be mounted about here, which nicely covers those holes. So now I need to figure out where to drill these holes and I would like, if I could, to reuse this. Now, when you're drilling this, you have to be very, very careful not to go all the way through and hit the hull. I think I got a fair bit of distance there. If I come in five centimeters thereabouts, how much, ah, in hindsight, I should have beveled this back. Oh, well, we're too late now. That should get the hole here. This is the bottom. I'm going to flip it over. So, so I need to come down five centimeters. This isn't a super exact science. Now, if I want it about here, put that there, pull it forward. I want it about four centimeters in. So that's where I want my first hole. Now, looking at this hole, this panel, is an inch thick, 25 millimeters thick. So I don't know how concerned I am about reusing this. So long as I, when I drill down, the thickness of this is about one centimeter. So I need about three and a half centimeters, whatever that is in, in Imperial, to physically mount this. These are the screws I have available to me. And they're flipping massive. I think these are the ones that came out of the old head. I would like to have used a countersink head, whatever you call it, but I don't think I have any I can use. I'm probably just going to have to use these. I may not actually be able to use that hole. I'm going to have to put this in, put the head in, and mark where I can physically put the, the screws, because these aren't going to sit flush with the plinth, so they can't foul with the bottom of the tank. So I don't think I'm going to be able to reuse those holes, which isn't the end of the world. Do I have washers for them all? Two washers. Yeah, see, that's the kind of screw I would rather use because then I could countersink it and make it flush. It'd probably be strong enough, but yeah. So one of the things I want to make sure I can do is open this and get here. So that's far enough forward. Let's actually move this over. It won't be centered, but that's okay. Again, this is trip home. If I put that close to the edge, ugh. in hindsight, what I should have done is cut this edge. I could probably still do it, you know. It won't be sealed back there because I don't have any oil, but again, one trip home. 
That'll give more space to stand here when you're at the galley sink. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that edge off first and then try to bump this right up to the side. Ow, my toe. So I'm gonna come in five and a half centimeters. And the distance, let's call it six. Oh, uh, that's the bottom. Okay, fine woodworking, this is not. All right, not even close to perfect, but it'll do the job. Now this is exposed. Oh well, can't win them all. Let's get the uh, head back in here. Huh. That makes a nice little handy alignment tool. That's still good enough. I can get everything in here. So I think put one vaguely here, vaguely here, vaguely here, and vaguely here. So obviously these are not aligned at all. So let me see if I can get something that's a little bit more symmetrical. So that's about four and a half. Can I do four and a half from all corners? Later, this will become a template for a better install. That puts me at four and a half there. Four and a half. Now what's the distance? Actually, it'd be better to come from this side because I cut that back off. 25 and a half, 25 and a half, four and a half. Okay, let's see if I can do that and not foul with the head. Okay, that bolt's clear, that bolt's clear, that bolt's clear, and that bolt's clear. Yep, these holes will work. This is what we're gonna do. I don't want to drill this so that these threads bind because you can see it's a, can you see that? It's a flat at the top here. So the threads aren't meant to engage with this. The threads are meant to engage with the bottom and it's gonna be held in by the washer and the bolt. So I wanna choose, well, three eighths is my biggest. Let's hope that's big enough. Three eighths is too big, excellent. Let's try five sixteenths. Five sixteenths looks good. So I'm gonna try drilling five sixteenths holes and make sure these slot in. And then I'll put this back where I want it to be and start drilling the holes into the actual plastic. And obviously, if I really cared about this, I would be putting some Osmo oil in there as well. Make sure I'm not gonna drill into the combing. Just in time for the rain to start again. Let's go back inside. Actually, so first of all, make sure that was the right size bolt. Yeah, probably should have been a touch bigger, but yeah, should be all right. Now, will a one quarter be enough? I think one quarter is going to be a little bit too small. Eh, it should be okay. It'll bind tightly, but that's okay. So I think what I'm going to do is put this one in first, and then with that, I can pivot on there to set this to be as square as I can get and then I'll go from here. And as for this, well, I'll probably put some tape over it just so that nothing falls in there. Be very careful not to drill through the hull. I know I have about one inch to drill through. Actually, you know what? I believe this is very far away from the hull because I've got a lot of cabinetry back there. Uh, maybe. It comes down and comes in like this, but still, I'm going to be very, very, very careful. Okay. Don't go past the flag. Okay, and I just went through. Let's try getting that bolted in. Oops, I just bumped you with my head. Okay, before I completely bite that home, let's see, we're at. Pretty close to easy. Okay. 
All right, good enough for government work. Now, this flag has to move up the drill bit. And by this flag, I mean I'm gonna make a new flag. It was 25 millimeter, one inch through here, uh, one centimeter here, I don't know what that is, three-eighths, something like that. Okay, that's as far as I want to go. Okay, let's get these two in. Let's get some uh, cosmetic duct tape on here. This is just so that if anything gets dropped, it doesn't inevitably find its way down the hole. After I get home, I'll see how this works, and then I'll make a new plinth that comes in and nicely sits over this. I'll probably have some supports under here, but I'll figure it out. Okay, let's get the head back in there. I'm not going for super accuracy here, just kind of sort of accuracy. So that's six and a half, that's five and a half. Six and six, that seems right. Okay, I'm happy with that. How's the rotation? Six, okay. So now, back these off so they're sitting square. Okay. Whoops. Now, in theory, I should be able to put these back where they were. And that should be where those screws go. The only videos I could find on how to install this show these as tapered screws, which is what I would have expected, but that's not what came with this one. I've got to say, Airheads got no documentation online, which is slightly surprising and annoying. I generally don't save paper manuals because I just assume I can find them all online. I need to go... Ooh, that was hot. I'm only going to put one screw in each and then do a test fit before I drill the second one. Okay. Let's see how these fit. These are actually biting into the fiberglass as well, so it's giving a bit more support. The two ways this plinth could fail is it rips out, which I really don't think is going to happen, or it just flat out breaks, which could still happen. So with that, we should now be able to mount the first use bucket. Actually, this should be ready for a more or less permanent install. Excellent. Excellent. I need to put the intake filter on the forward side, and then I need to glue in the hose mount on the aft side. Oh, it goes in the main unit. So this piece here should apparently just snap into place. There we go. And then the port side, or the, the aft side, is where the hose is gonna go. And that is where I need some PVC cement. All right. So what I saw was they recommended rolling the gasket back. This goes in like this, flip this upside down, and that gets glued on right here. It'll allow it to still rotate, and then when I push the gasket in, it should snap in. So let's get some glue. What is this for? Is this? That's got a filter in it as well. I need to go figure out what these are. I'll be right back. So without any help from Airhead's website, I figured out this is a quick release. So it's a bug hole. You screw the hose into here. Basically you, you cut the hose at some point and you screw one end into either side 
and this allows you to pull the hose apart quickly. And it has a bug filter to make sure the bugs don't climb inside. So we're gonna set this aside for now. This collar goes on here and helps retain it. Now hopefully I got the right cement. When you're doing this to open this, don't squeeze it too high. You'll deform the can and make it even harder to pull apart. Oh, okay, this is gray when I thought I needed blue. Electrical, medium gray, PVC. Oh, I hope I have the right stuff. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. The reason I'm not sure if this is the right stuff is because the videos I saw, it was always blue. Oh, I hope this is the right stuff. If it's not, you can drill holes and just put screws through it. How long should it take to set up? Hold pipe and fit together for 30 seconds to prevent pipe push out. Longer at low temperatures. Well, give it a minute or so and see if she sets up. Well, it actually feels like it's set, okay. So, as I understood, if you recall, I pulled the gasket back. So now we just roll it forward snaps into place and that should help make an air seal here. Let's put that on the bucket. Don't step on the tools and hurt your feet. Oh, it's nice to have that secure. Now we have to put the liquid bucket in. back that off to get the ah maybe that's what I have to do I have to back that off okay same thing I did last time mark with a pencil the outside of the retaining brackets if I can find my pencil and pizza ah, so. okay that's not one thing to note is that these are not interchangeable so make sure that you have them in the right alignment before you mark your holes for the screw. The same thing, I'm gonna do just one on other side. Okay, let's try that. Sit again. There we go. Oh, now it's too tight. All right, let's, uh, See so and push these out some. Okay. Ah, it needs a, needs a little push, but she went in. She'll be all right. That's the physical install of the head. Oh, haha. <laughs> all right, so before, because the seat had to be set back, this here would push me forward and I have to basically sit like this, which is not very comfortable. I can't directly sit up, but I can sit up a lot closer than I could before. The other concern I had, concerned, the other concern I had was how much flex was this going to have because it's floating under here. And it's actually not that bad. And I intentionally, I didn't cut this short because I wanted to have a place to put your heels because it's a fair ways down. And yeah, I mean, it's not super comfortable. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, but it's fit for purpose. And that was the point. Sweet. So I took a bit of a break to charge things up, except for the GoPro, plugged it in, decided, no, I don't want to charge. You, you're, you're fine with 33%. All right, with the toilet back in place, it's getting to be really cramped in here. So I'm hoping I can figure out how to film this for you guys. So I don't know, oh. <laughs> How can I do this? Okay, well, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So I need to pull some of this back. This hose that comes with the airhead is not very long. I might have to extend it. So this has to come up into here and gets pushed in like that. One of the videos I was watching, they were using standard hard plumbing. And I think that's what I'm going to do when I get home. I'm going to replace all this hose with, I mean, there'll be flexible joints. Obviously it's a boat. It's going to be moving a lot, but I might use like hard nineties and hard nineties with flexible parts in between. Cut this up to be a bunch of flex. 
Now, I have to get from here to here, and that's probably not going to be long enough. I've got a fair bit of slack here that I can pull down. That's disgusting. And I have a coupler that is close enough to the right size that I could figure something out, but that's the next trick. I also somewhere in here have to get the fan working. So I have to get this through the hole down here, which I tried to show you on camera earlier, but I couldn't really get a good view of. Hell, I'm here and I can barely see it. All right, let me see if I can show you what I did here. So you can see how it comes out from under the bulkhead and goes up through that bulkhead. Now you're gonna see with me how much slack I have. Oh, I have plenty. All right. Oh, would you look at that. So I just have to get the fan stuck into the middle of that. That quick disconnect, I am gonna use it, but in the final install, I'm not gonna use it for the trip home. The wires that come with this are very, very, very tiny gauge. I have to figure out where to wire in. I need a 12 volt supply now. I think that's what I need to figure out next. I think what I'm gonna do is because these wires are so fragile, I'm gonna go get some of the black and white wire that I've got that I was using for the lights yesterday, the, um, the anchor stuff. And I'm going to make longer pigtails off of this because I don't imagine this draws too much. They have this big sticker over it. Do not touch center. I mean, of course not, but it's just a standard fan inside. There you go. Sanyo Denki. 12 volt, 0 0.06 amp. So that's gonna be very, very, very low current draw. So I'm not too worried about junctions and whatnot. I need to figure out where I can pick up 12 volts. Let's sort that out next. That didn't work. I thought that was gonna blow. Here we go. Let's try this. I always seen these, uh, the hand to the camera things to phase out. I wanna try that. No, no I gotta do it centered. I'm starting to think again. I might, uh, hmm. Hmm, ah, whatever, problem for later. So the idea behind this here is, this here threads on Let's take this fan out. Oh, so much space for activities. Ah, right, it's a left-hand thread, so it, it threads backwards from what you expect. Okay, so that's in tight. What is this wire? Okay, this goes, that's the sump. The sump is a, another problem to be solved. Oh, could this be any more awkward to work in? I mean, it's a boat, the answer is yes, of course it could be. They're using actual morettes. Oh, for the love of. So this used to power the macerator. So it's like 10 gauge wire. Or maybe 12, maybe 14. 10 gauge by two. It's definitely overkill. Where's my knife and strippers? This boat's going to be entirely rewired. I don't trust any of the wiring on this boat anymore. Like this kind of stuff here, I can actually see. This is tinned copper and it feels flexible. This is actually safe. There's not enough of it to be worth saving or reusing. So it's not like the entire boat is unsafe. It's just, well... 40 years old. Ew. Oh, and I'll show you guys later. Matt got the uh, Bimini up. Absolutely glorious. I'm gonna strip the negative first and put a clip on it. Okay. So the negative is connected. Now what I wanna do is see if I have 12 volt right now. I do not. Flip the switch. I still have no power. Huh? Do I have to press this button? Oh, you know what it might be? I bet you there's a breaker. If I can actually bring this out here so I can see it. Now you can't see it, I realize. Shower sump. Steaming light, deck light, tricolor, radar, running lights, auxiliary pump. That's it, 13.8 volts on the auxiliary pump. Alrighty, so right now there's no power, which is good. You know, this is long enough with this. I'm just gonna put this straight on. It's ridiculous going from what, 20 gauge to uh, 10 gauge. I'm gonna strip this back some more. 
and I'm going to treat this like a wire wrap. What I mean by a wire wrap is, it used to be a thing in computers where you would actually wrap a wire around a pin to create a connection. Well, can I actually kind of interleave this a little bit? Again, we're dealing with incredibly small... Oh, I gotta put the... I gotta put some uh, shrink tubing on there first. Now, I've never used the outlet in here before, but there is an outlet in here. We're gonna find out together if this outlet works. Does it work? So, son of a bitch, it does. Sweet! Where's the shrink tubing? I just had the shrink. Come on, Maddie. Things would go a lot faster if you had, like, a memory that's longer than a gnat. There it is. Where's the electrical tape? There it is. All right. This should now st Oh, f Can you see what I did wrong? Well, I guess we're taking the handle off. Oh, how many of you saw that coming and just were laughing at me? Like, Maddie, Maddie, you're about to make a mistake. Too bad you're in the future. Well, I'm in the past. Uh, that was definitely one of my brighter moves. Problem solved. What I need to do now is apply power and make sure that the fan is blowing. That was facing up, so the, I want the air blowing towards me in this regards. Okay, fan spinning. Yes, and I can feel the air coming out. Let me see, can I show you a piece of... So, you can see it's blowing the right way. Great. The next thing to figure out, and this is probably just gonna be a question of duct tape. How do I connect this to this? I need to make like a cone that I can fit over this and fit over this and just duct tape the hell out of it. The trick is, as usual, I've thrown out all my cardboard. I have a box of Raisin Bran that's not open. I have a box of crackers. This box of crackers should do it. Packages and packages because, you know, waste isn't a concern. Let's do arts and crafts with a digital mermaid. If this works, do I get my honorary red green membership? The Canadians just laughed and everyone else is like, what the hell are you talking about? So that's gonna go like that. Can I get this out here proper so I have more space to work? I had an idea while the camera was off. I don't really want to have to try to tape to this because I think it's pretty grot and I don't know how well the tape would hold. All right, that's grabbing. There's gotta be a better way to do this. How can I do this? How can I do this? Shit, this isn't even big enough. Let's see what I have in the way of parts. Could I use gasket material? I just had an idea. I'm trying to turn this into a cone. I don't see why I have to do that. All I need is a framework for the tape. It doesn't have to create a seal itself. Now, I 
don't think that's still long enough. Nope, it's not, but it's getting there. Better yet, I can take this off entirely to do this. Guyver, please forgive me, for I have sinned. So this is the point where I have to put the fan back in it. In hindsight, I should have done the fan first, or I should have done the comb first with the wires hanging out, and then tried stuffing this in. But here we are, we work with what we have. Try to give this uh, wire a little bit more of a fighting chance. There, the poor person's strain relief. So at least now if it pulls, it grabs against this. It has a, it's not pulling right at the wires at the hub. And a little more shielding. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself to feel slightly less horrible about this job I'm doing. an abomination. All right, let's try to get the other end on now. Okay, I think I can cut off this excess. Absolute shit show this is. Okay, so that's done up. Let's uh, open the cap on the deck turn on the breaker and see if we get airflow coming out. Seems to be. Let's go inside and see if it uh, sticks. Maybe that's just too heavy. It's working. Uh, it's not a lot of fan, but I mean, it's five watts, so... Uh, yeah, I don't expect a lot. So with that, the last step is to get this hose in. At least I can't twist it anymore, so I'm just trying to physically force it in. Okay. All right, it doesn't need to blow a lot of air. It just has to basically create enough low pressure that it's sucking air this way and blowing it out. Okay. Don't fall over, please. Definitely seems to be getting sucked in. I call that a success. A very, very qualified success. 
our duct tape adventures are not quite over yet. Now we have to get the exhaust fan or the exhaust hose on. And for that, we're going upstairs or up above. We're gonna need zip ties, the long ones finally. All right, let's go. Oh, let me show you what uh, Matt got done. Got the Dodger. Ain't that look beautiful. She's starting to really look like a boat. As we saw yesterday, this was a quick connect. My plan now is to rig this. Ah, see there's the problem is, it's two inch to two inch. <gasps> ooh, 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 I might have a fix. I might have a fix, I might have a fix, I might have a fix. Where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go? Yes! I need a screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? Screwdriver! There you are. Uh, Kepler. Okay. That's pinching down in there, which is not perfect, but that's okay. So let's get that on. Get this on. Get this up like that. Get that jammed in like that. Okay. That should hold that. Let's get Move these around here. Yeah, let's do it over the lifeline. Might just do this and call it a day. It just has to not get water in when it rains. So if I do this, I should probably come back. So if I, the water's gonna be coming from that way if I get any kind of speed. So yeah, let's do this. Okay, elegant, no, pretty, absolutely not. Functional? I think so. If this isn't the jankiest job I have ever done, but I don't see I don't see any reason why it's not gonna work. It just has to keep the air flowing out of the head. It's certainly not to manufacture spec, but it only has to move air and it is moving air. So sitting on my auspicious throne. So, sti so sitting on my auspicious throne, I'm going to call this one an episode. I have one task left before we leave, one task to do. We've got a lot of things to do as far as test sales and safety stuff. Sorry, words are escaping me right now. I'm very tired. But the last thing to do is to rename my girl and do the renaming ceremony. And that's going to be an episode on its own. So that's what's coming up next. I'm the Digital Mermaid. Um, forgive me for I have sinned. <laughs> Let's see if we can get home without too much uh, hoobastank in the, uh, in the head. I'll see you next time. Well then, I didn't know that's how that worked. <laughs>